Okay, today we're going to discuss looping through all the databases on a server. And you'll probably know that when you go back and look at some of my videos, we already do this. What we do is we declare a table. For instance, we will declare a database table as a case in point. And then we'll, you know, put like database name and we'll call that a var car 100, etc., etc., etc. And we basically build it like we would build any other table. Okay, well, that's, that's great, but think about it. We have to, first of all, build the table to go through the steps, right? So we have to build the table. Well, actually, we're going to do it this way. We have to build the table. Then we have to insert the data. And then we need to use the data in the loop. Now, don't get me wrong. That works, right? You could use that type of a loop and you could re-index all the tables on database, you could back up every database, uh, so on and so forth. So that approach works. That's not a bad approach whatsoever. However, you'll notice there's three steps here, okay? So let's suppose we wanted to shorten the steps. Let's actually do it faster. And again, there, there are a lot of different approaches to looping through a database as a or databases on a server. For instance, you can use PowerShell. PowerShell is a really great way to do it. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to actually use our loop um, like we've always been doing. So we're going to declare a beginning variable, uh, beginning end variable, which is one. And we're going to declare an end variable, which is uh, an end as well. And this is... Um, uh, actually, I'll just put it as end, and then we will select a SQL which will be Navarkar max. So this will be our dynamic SQL here. Okay, and then what we need to do is we need to get the end variable. So we're going to select uh, max equal to. The count name uh, from sys dot databases. I'm gonna verify that. Oh, whoops! End. Huh. Even though max will work. All right, so let's verify. We have twenty three databases. Okay, yeah, I had to actually count, like, I don't believe I have that many databases on this server, but I do. So, anyway, my apologies for the brief silence there, and I was actually doing the, crunching the numbers. I was like, eh, that seems wrong. Okay, so we're going to start our while loop, and while begin is less than or equal to end, we're going to begin, and then we will end, and of course, as a while loop goes, and I've gone over while loops before, so you can look back on past videos, but... That's the way it works, you know, while begin, which is one starting out, is less than or equal to end, keep looping through and set begin equal to begin plus one while you're looping through. Um, and then once it, once it equals end, notice that at the very end, let's say end was, well, end will be 23 in this case, if begin becomes 24, it will no longer perform the loop because begin will be greater than end. So uh, just a re quick review. Now you'll notice I have not built the temp table or the variable table, or the hash table, whatever you want to call it, and I have not inserted any data, right? So I haven't done those two things. I've already built a loop, but I haven't done anything um, yet related to any uh, inserting of data. Okay, and so what I'm going to do here is we're going to use a common table expression. And we are going to do something that we've done before. You'll notice in our loops, if you look at past, um, past videos, you'll notice that in the database uh, loop that I build with the temp table, we always have an ID field. 
that's going to be very important and you will see that we still have an ID field and just right off the bat I want to show from uh, database name okay. so we can actually execute this and you'll notice here's our databases right Okay, so we haven't built a temp table. We have actually built a common table expression. And again, a temp table works, a temp table's fine. There's nothing wrong with a temp table. This is one of the approaches, but don't, don't think for one second in your life you have to do this approach. So the next thing we want to do is we want to, I believe I missed out here on a name. Oops, not that big. Is we want to select the name from this table where the ID equals begin. And then what we're going to do, one second, so when the loop is going on, we are going to select the name, name this variable here is going to become the name of the database where id equals begin. Now almost all of you will recognize something immediately. Without building the temp table, without inserting any data, we have actually already performed the action of now looping through all of the database names. You'll notice that's because begin is, let's say, starting at 1. So it starts at 1. So it's going to go in here and let's see where's database 1, AdventureWorks. So it's going to select name equal to um, AdventureWorks. And then what we want to do is we want to per, we want to print out the name. Now in this example, I'm going to keep it simple, and I don't think I actually have to use dynamic SQL in this example. Uh, so I'm going to code this out. I'm going to test, but I'm pretty sure I don't have to. Um, the one I was using earlier today, I was trying to find the name of a certain table because I had put a table somewhere. And um, so I was trying to find the name of a table really fast, and so it could have been in any of the databases, long story short, but uh, it could have been in any of the databases because someone built a table and it, who knows, there's I think 100 databases on the server, so what I needed to do is find this table in the server. Well, several of these databases have a thousand tables, so um, unless you just want to go through manually, it's so much faster to script it out, so I actually use dynamic SQL, but I think in this case I won't have to use dynamic SQL. Um, yeah, I don't have to. And so let's look at the result here. What we really did is we printed out all the database names, right? Now, why, why is that useful? Okay, well, so this gets our name that we need to do basically the loop. If we were backing up a database, our script would be, uh, let me go back to this here. And this is an example. I'm not going to actually do a backup database because I don't really want to do that with all of these databases. But our script would be right backup database, oops, database, and we would back up plus name, right? Oops. And then we would do plus, and then we do two disk equals d. Let's suppose we had D backup. Okay, so we're going to do D backup and we're going to stop there and then we're going to take the name again and we're going to add that to um, underscore. Uh, let's just do, do BAK for this example. All right, so we have execute C and then we would do um, yeah, execute our SQL. Right? 
So let's, let's look at this just for a quick second. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, this is incorrect. Hold on. That part is correct. I'm not actually going to test this out, so, but uh, I will warn. This might not be correct either, uh, but remember that on the um, when you're backing up a database, just as a case in point. So just this will be good, useful for understanding the syntax of Dynamic SQL. So say if we're going to say backup database, um, and let's say we want to backup database client marketing to disk. Now we'll do to disk and it's equal. I'm sorry. And we're going to do D uh, uh, backup slash client marketing dot B A K. So if you wonder why I'm getting that extra thing, well, you'll notice. And if we were doing a dynamic SQL script, so we would put this here and we would put this here. Oh, I'm sorry, no, not there. So we put that there and then we would do here and we would do here. there yeah and the reason why I say that and where I'm getting that from specifically um, is that it's kind of like if you're typing out a letter in dynamic SQL let's say you're printing notes in your notes it says hasn't been uh oh you actually put when there's one apostrophe you put to hasn't been ready so it's the same thing when you're backing it up to a disk it's um, two disk actually now that I think about it, it might be this one right here But you're going to back it up to disk that way. And uh, hold on. I'm going to check my D drive really fast. Oh, yeah, it does have a lot. Um, that's when I had. Only 18 databases. So it's backups. All right. Yep, that's what it is. That's the syntax. So. It's one of those things that um, I, ha I hate to say it, but it, I can sometimes forget like crazy. It's like, wait a minute, this and and it's just it's just one of those things that we do this a lot. We just test it in dev really fast. But if you ever have questions, that's why testing is so useful. But anyway, so I guess I'll back up my databases again. I think I did that in a former video. Anyway, that's what those other databases are from. But as you can see, uh, that uh, that's how useful this is because you'll notice again we didn't have to go through. The entire, in fact, our dynamic SQL line is really short, and we didn't have to go through building this massive um, temp table where we then inserted the data. We actually just used a very small four line common table expression, and that's that. Yeah, you can pack up database MVP. That's funny. So, so that's something that you can use. That's an alternative to temp tables. One of the things that you'll, and I think I've mentioned this before, is you can use temp tables almost in every single case that you can use. I'm sorry, uh, common table expressions in almost every case that you can use temp tables. Um, that doesn't mean that they're always better. Again, there are advantages with temp tables. And so that's why one of the best answers in SQL Server is it depends. But don't underestimate the power of uh, common table expressions. Even with something like a loop, you can see the loop is very small here uh, compared to creating a table where you have a database ID, a database name, then inserting the databases in there and so on and so forth. This is actually a lot shorter and a lot quicker.